Good morning, Bridge City Church. We're so excited that you joined us this morning for our online worship experience. My name is Buddy, and this is also Buddy. And and hey, Buddy, I I made you lunch. Oh, spaghetti and syrup. My favorite. My favorite. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know what else is my favorite? What's that? Christmas. I love Christmas. It's my favorite time of year. <laughs> So good, so good. And uh, we've been preparing for Christmas for a very long time. Really long time. Like 364 days. I know. Time. I mean, yeah. So uh, <laughs> how many Etch-a-Sketches did you make today? 85. Pretty good, pretty good. A little off pace. That's all right. Yeah, you'll, you'll make it up. There's always next year. <laughs> yeah. But uh, I made you this. It took me a couple days, but... Uh, Thanks, man. It's your... Uh, a nutcracker. Yeah, and we have a gift for you too. Uh, we have a $5 Starbucks gift card. The world's best cup of coffee. <laughs> it sure is. So just hit the new here button on the page and fill out a connection card. Uh, and we will get you a Starbucks gift card. So, uh, but we just wanna meet you. We wanna say hi and thanks for joining us. Um, but one thing we have coming up this week, one of our favorite things of the year, is our Christmas candlelight experience. And online. It's online. I can't wait. Online. December 23rd, 7 p.m. 7 p.m. And then if you missed that, don't worry. December 24th, we're going to replay it all day long. All day long! It's just like the Christmas story <laughs> on TBS. <laughs> so you need to come and be a part of that. Uh, we want you to join us for that online worship experience time. We're very excited, very excited. So, uh, but today, we've got a lot planned for you, and we're starting it off with worship. Why don't you pray to get us into worship, buddy? Absolutely. Father God, thank you so much uh, for everything that you've done for us. Uh, thank you for sending your son uh, to die for our sins. Uh, we worship you in the next few minutes here. We lift you high. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Let's worship. Like the wildest ocean Oh, nothing else compares 
us, but to your name we lift up all praise. Not to us, but to your name we lift up all praise. down your crown to become a man The fate of the world was held in your hands The people who waited the promise to come The joy through the night revealing the sun the one who saved my soul Worthy is the one who makes us whole You shattered the silence of a triumphant All of creation can call on your name. And on bend the knee, your people will come to worship the King, the glory is Where? 
worthy is the one who makes us Oh, your promise to me is evergreen You'll never leave us When seasons change and winter rains Glory remains God That was a super duper time of worship. I really enjoyed it. What'd you think, buddy? I'm singing in a church. <laughs> I'm singing. <laughs> Why are you smiling so much? Smiling's my favorite. Oh, well, giving's my favorite. And we're gonna give you an opportunity today to give back. And so follow the instructions on the screen for, for the ways to give. That's right. And we have a special missions offering we're gonna hear about today. So let's check that out before we get into the message. Awesome. Hey, Bridge City family, during the Christmas season, we're compelled to consider all the blessings in our lives. As a Christian, I begin with the arrival of our Savior, Jesus Christ. And then I go on to all the other blessings in my life, things that I tend to take for granted, and I imagine you do too. The blessing of family, having more possessions than I know what to do with. And how about a safe home in a loving and secure environment? Sadly, so many people in our city and in our country don't count any of those blessings. They awoke this morning struggling, struggling with feelings of hopelessness, wondering if anybody even cares, fearful they won't be able to meet their family's basic needs, and even homelessness. You and I are under a mandate from God to care for the poor and the hurting. Check out these words from the prophet Zechariah. I wanna focus specifically on God's word that we are to show mercy and kindness to the widow, the orphan, the foreigner, and the poor. And we wanna give you opportunity during this Christmas season to minister to the widow, the orphan, the foreigner, and the poor. The following are organizations that are meeting the needs of women in crisis, marginalized youth, and refugees. Genesis of Pittsburgh is a social service agency providing programming, services, and housing to pregnant women, along with support for young families and adoption services. Auburn, operating right out of McKeesport. It's a nationally recognized agency that serves over 4,000 children, youth, and families every single year offering housing, emergency shelter, mental health programs, even home intervention, youth programs, and others. Lynn's House provides housing for women coming out of jail, divorce, domestic abuse, or even mental health struggles. It's located in Louisiana, and they provide an environment for healing and spiritual restoration. Hello Neighbor, it's an agency that works to assist and improve the lives of recently settled refugees. Founded right here in Pittsburgh, they have a simple focus of family-centered programming and linking volunteers with recently settled family. 100% of the families they are reaching are under the poverty line. All four of these organizations are at the grassroots level, following God's mandate to care for the poor and marginalized. And right now, you and I have the opportunity to be part of that mission with a generous financial gift. As always, every dollar given will be shared among these organizations. Let me leave you with this verse, Proverbs 11:25. The generous will prosper, and those who refresh others will themselves be refreshed. I challenge you, let's honor our King by our generosity this season. Merry Christmas. Hey, Pastor Rick and my wife Natalie here, and we just want to take this opportunity to wish you a very Merry Christmas. Yeah, it's on our hearts this year, especially just with everything going on in our lives, to leave you with encouragement from scripture and Philippians 4, 6 and 7 is on my heart to share with you. I know there's a lot of reasons why we have to worry and to fear um, in the world today, but Philippians 4, 6 to 7 says, don't worry about anything, instead pray about everything. Tell God what you need and then thank Him for all He has done. And I want to encourage you to do that because the next verse says, then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything that we can even understand. 
His peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. And that's our wish for you, is that you would have that peace that goes beyond all of your troubles and all of your heartache and everything that you can't even understand and that you'd be able to give all those worries and troubles to Him and in return receive His peace this coming Christmas. And that's our prayer for you. Our prayer is that the peace and the love and the life of Jesus would be real to you. So a very Merry Christmas to you. Hey, Bridge City Church, thank you once again for joining us. Here we are in part three. Are you ready for a miracle? To get ready for Christmas is to rekindle that God is still in the miracle business. That's right. The incarnation is so significant to our Christian faith. There's no resurrection with no incarnation. And God still wants us to believe in miracles. And today, we're going to take a look at an introvert. That's right. Today, I'm dedicating this message to all the introverts out there. That's right. If you're a a C personality, very consistent, or an S, very stable, you're quiet, you're not the one that's going to be in the front of the class, or you're not the one that's going to speak out and, and, and be the first to pray out loud. This message is for you. Because many times in the Bible, Many times, we see the people that are doing miracles, uh, the Apostle Paul, Peter, Jesus, and we say, you know, I can never be like them. But God can use everybody right where you are. You don't have to be the loudest one or the wildest one, but God can use you to usher in a miracle. And so we're going to be looking today at the life of Joseph. That's right, Joseph, Mary's husband, or I guess soon to be husband, she was betrothed to him, and and what he went through in ushering in, and and what he went through to set himself up to be a part of this awesome, over-the-top miracle. You know, God is not afraid to ask us to do things that we don't fully understand. Many times in my life, God has asked me to uh, quit a job, and when I remember Uh, We were, Natalie was pregnant with our second child and leave uh, leave a job, leave benefits behind and take a job that was for a lot less money. But God asked us to do this and we had to take that step of faith together. So God asks us to do things sometimes that sometimes cause a little fear, sometimes that there's a tension in our hearts, but that's the kind of business that he is in. But this is the key. If we don't perceive what God is doing, will never believe in faith. That's right, perceive. Listen, that is so vitally important to us. Are we aware? Are we seeing through eyes of faith? And a lot of times God is doing things, but we're not perceiving, and so it interrupts our believing. God wants to put all of these things together. We're going to start today in Matthew chapter 1. Matthew 1. We spent the last two weeks, and if you didn't listen to to, uh, either one of those, please go back, watch them online, listen to the message, uh, learn about the miracle of the incarnation, and Mary's response as well. Key, key points in our Christian faith. So here we are in Matthew chapter 1, verse 18. This is how the Messiah was born. His mother Mary was engaged to be married to Joseph. But before the marriage took place, while she was still a virgin, she became pregnant through the power of the Holy Spirit. Joseph, to whom she was engaged, was a righteous man and did not want to disgrace her publicly. So he decided to break the engagement quietly. So so this is the deal. In the Jewish culture at this point in time, 
they, Mary and Joseph already did their wedding vows. There was a commitment, but they, they didn't live together. They didn't sleep together at this point. Mary was still a virgin. Joseph would have been preparing a home, preparing a place for their family at this point. So it's in that time that they were betrothed. They were com- it, more than an engagement, more than this is going to happen, this has happened. Okay, but there was a process to it happening here. So what we want to do is take a look at Joseph. What does Joseph mean? Joseph means to add, an increaser. It's may the Lord add. We see that reference back in Genesis chapter 30. But that's what the name Joseph means. So if we want to be a part of miracles, we want to see God's miraculous power happen in today's day and age. That's right, in 2020 and 2021 going forward, we need to be value adders. So I want to ask you a question. Are you somebody that adds value, brings increase to, to, to faith and to other people, or are you one who takes value for yourself? God is looking for people that bring value, that add value, that bring increase, and that's a spirit and an attitude that we bring. Now, I just want to give you a little bit of trivia here. Uh, according to the Social Security uh, office and, and the website, over the last 100 years, the last 100 years, the most popular name in the United States was Mary. That's right, over 3.2 million Marys over the last 100 years. Joseph, however, is number eight on the list of, of men. Mary's total overall, if just male names, Joseph's number eight. Now, these are really, that's really interesting that these are very popular characters and popular names. Now, Joseph's number eight. I just want to let you know that Richard is number seven. I'm not bragging. I'm just saying. That's, a, that's the truth there. But the, there's a little bit of trivia there. But this is what I want to point out here. One, it only takes one person to make a big difference. You may be right now thinking, I'm just one of millions. I'm just one of million, this name, that name. One of millions in, in Pennsylvania or the United States. But I want to tell you this. One person can make a big difference. You have been created by God and for God to be a difference maker. And God can use us right now where we are, even with all the turmoil and chaos going on in our culture and the time in which we live, God's looking for people who will simply obey him. That's right. So let's take a look at Joseph. Let's continue to look at him. It's interesting that Joseph has no words recorded in the Bible. That's right, no words. Uh, n- n- nothing about that here. He protected the mother of God and helped raise Jesus, the Messiah. Think about that. He's not even mentioned in the Gospel of Mark, uh, in, in most of the New Testament. Now, he is mentioned in Matthew, in Luke, but only once in John, where someone calls him the son, uh, the, Joseph, the son of Joseph. They're referring to Jesus there. Now, again, we're looking at, we, we, we think that, again, the, the big characters, and, and we tend to be drawn to them, but God wants to use everyday, ordinary people like you and me. But think about this, is he was entrusted to be Jesus' earthly father, to protect him, to nurture him. He was a carpenter. And there's evidence that, that Jesus most likely was an apprentice to Joseph, and he was a carpenter too. He He taught the Messiah how to do carpentry. Think about that. That's crazy here. Now, earlier in the the chapter, first chapter, Matthew 1, there's this long genealogy, and it's 17 verses of genealogy. Now, I'll be honest with you. When I think of genealogy, and when I'm reading all the names, this person begot that person, to begot that person, to begot that person, it makes me sleepy. It does. I, I have trouble getting through it sometimes. But I want to point out the significance of the genealogy. It's so very significant that they traced Joseph's genealogy back all the way to the lineage of David. Why is this important? If you were to look at Jeremiah 23, 5 through 6, that the Messiah, Jesus, had to come through the line of David. Now, as you read over the genealogy, and this is what I want you to do this week, what I want you to do every single day this week, I want you to read Matthew chapter 1 and chapter 2. Every single day, just start out your day reading it and allow this Christmas story as we know it 
come alive to you again. Look for all the little nuances. Look for the things you've never seen before and allow the, the miracle of the incarnation become real to you again. Now, as you're reading those first 17 verses, don't brush over them. There's something very significant here. The writer, Matthew, when he could have included Sarah, Rebecca, and Rachel, which have which really been matriarchs to Israel, he included four ladies here. Now, first of all, it's interesting that he put ladies in the genealogy at all, because really it would have been for, it would have been all males listed here. But he lists Tamar, Rahab, Ruth, and Bathsheba. All Canaanite or Moabite, all that were uh, non-Israelites, all connected to either a sex scandal or, or was a prostitute. Why would the writer put this in here? I personally believe it was for two reasons. The first reason is, is God is not wrapped up in your past the way you are. Yes, there's many of you out there, there's many people that have, a, have a, maybe what we call a checkered past or a problem past, and you're saying God can't use you. God can use you to move Jesus' cause forward. God can use you right where you are. And don't get wrapped up in your past, get wrapped up in your future. That's what I believe, first of all, God is saying. Second of all, I believe this, that, that predominantly here, Matthew's writing to a Jewish audience, and he used four Gentiles, those outside of the Jewish faith. Could it be, and I'm asking that question, could it be that God was reminding us through the writer, Matthew, as he recorded us, that Jesus and salvation was not only for the Jew, but it was for the Gentile as well, that God wanted to communicate that to us here. Now here's Joseph. Let's go back to him. Here we go back to Joseph here. As you're going to see, Joseph had a huge faith in God, an integrity, a spiritually mature, a humble man. Now, I can only imagine what Mary went through when she had to talk to Joseph the first time. As a matter of fact, if, if she would have, if she would have uh, been using uh, text and she was trying to communicate with Joseph, because remember, he's off building the house, in, in, in building their home, and she communicates with Gabriel. The power of the Holy Spirit's upon her. She agrees to do this. Wonder if this is what it would sound like. And, and we can only wonder here. Um, hey, Joseph, what are you doing? Finishing installing the kitchen cabinets in our new home. Can't wait till you see them, Mary. Mary says, I, Mary says, I have something to tell you. She texts him back, I have something to tell you. Well, with long gaps here, so, Something happened the other day, and Joseph's, and it was very unusual. <laughs> okay, nothing like this has ever happened to me before. <laughs> okay, did you get new solar panels for our house? I mean, what is it? Like, did you get a sale um, like, like at Target? Well, what's going on here, Mary? Come on, come and help me out here. And, she, and Mary texts back, I, I really do love you, and I want a future for us. But... Now you're scaring me, Mary. Um, have you been talking to your mother again? No. Um, you're not making this any easier. Joseph, I have, I have no idea what you're trying to say. I'm tired and it's late. And Mary then, she burst out, I'm pregnant. Right there in the text, I'm pregnant. <laughs> that's funny, Mary, don't joke about that. Like I, like, I know I'm not the father. I know that's not true. Come on, Mary, I'm not joking. There was this angel, and he told me that I and, and, and we and, and, and us or, or, or me or, or like all of us here are going to, go, go, going to give birth to the Messiah. <laughs> you expect me to believe that? And Mary said, Joe, I'm not lying. It happened. It really did. I mean, I said I guess, and I mean, I said I will, but I need you to help me with this. And then a long gap, and, and Joe responds, Honestly, Mary, I need to consider these things before we move forward. Ah, I'll hit you up tomorrow. You can imagine what Joseph would have been going through here. I mean, was it shock? How could this happen? Was it frustration? This is a ridiculous story. Was it hurt? Like, I loved you, Mary. What are you doing here? Or was it anger? How dare you? Or was it any combination of those? Have you ever felt those things before? See, I believe, I believe if Joseph was a real man, I believe he was going through some of those things right there. I believe it would have been natural for him to feel all of them at one moment or another. How could 
he not feel that way? How could he not go through those things? So let's look at some of the attributes about Joseph. In verse 19, it says that he was a righteous man. He was a righteous man. That's right. Um, some translations say he was a good man. That's right, a good man. Upright, blameless. He conformed to God's laws and man's laws. I mean, he was blameless and upright. And listen, ladies, I just want to stop for a minute and talk to ladies that are married out there. Listen, a, 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 a good man may be hard to find, but he's not hard to keep. When you love him and you appreciate him, and I want to ask the ladies out there, if you have a good man, if you have a righteous man, when's the last time that you told him he's a good man? When's the last time you looked him in the eyes and thanked him for being a righteous man, for being, for being one that cares about his integrity and, 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 and does what's right before God? I just wanted to take this moment, and, and, and ladies out there that are married, and if you have a good man, let him know it. Let them know this week, because I know what it means to me when my wife looks to me and says, you're a good man. It, it builds my confidence. It builds me up as a man. I want to serve. I want to do things for her. That's what kind of man Joseph was. He was a good man, a righteous man. Now, verse 20. As he considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream. Joseph, son of David, the angel said, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child within her was conceived by the Holy Spirit. A couple things I want to point out about Joseph. He considers, first of all. He wanted to consider things. And what this means is, it means to meditate. Um, uh, this is my definition. It's a passionate pondering. It's going between the mind and the heart. Have you ever like struggled with a decision and it like you have this war going on between your mind and your heart and there's this there's this tension being lived out in your life right here they're like what do we do how do we do it what should we do here and, and, and joseph considers this and he's wrestling with a decision and i want to tell you sometimes with god as he asks you to step out in faith as he asks you to usher in a miracle as he asks you to, to to believe in him there's going to be a time where you have to wrestle with the purposes of God. That's right. You have to wrestle in mind and spirit here. You're going to have to wrestle with his heart. That's what Joseph did. But he considered these things. But he was sensitive to the Holy Spirit. That's right. Here again, do not be afraid. This is how you know you're here in God. There's a do not be afraid. That's what we need to realize. God asks us things that we're going to have to push by, push through our own fears, our own preconceived ideas to make sure that we're perceiving properly so that we can believe accordingly. That's right. We're going to have to perceive these things. But Joseph has dreams. Now, I'm, I'm, listen, God can use dreams. It's not the only way. It's not the way. It's just a way. We find Joseph, there's three times in chapters one and two of Matthew that God leads Joseph with a dream. And, and this is just a way that God speaks to him. What that communicates to me is he was sensitive to God's leading. In Matthew 2.13, what we see is uh, God told him, flee Egypt, protect your home. And then in verse 19, God says, hey, it's safe to go back. What I'm trying to communicate, don't look for dreams. Look to be sensitive to the Holy Spirit leading because God wants us to be spirit-led people. In the midst of the darkness of 400 years, in between the Old Testament and New Testament, the New Testament burst open with prophecies, visions, dreams, all of these things in the miraculous. In the midst of darkness, this is what I want to communicate to you. That's when God does his best work, where he stirs us to prophecy. He stirs us to these things. And I want to let you know, on January 16th, 2021, we're going to be doing a conference, and it's going to be made available to you if you can't join us in person. And we are going to help you believe for the supernatural. That's right, the power of God. And we're going to help you learn to be prophetic. We're going to help you be with your prayer life because these are the things God wants to do in us and for us because we, we need to realize what we do is spiritual. And God wants us all to be a part of this, not just me who maybe speaks in this fashion or up front, God can use all of us in miracles. That's the joy of this story right here. And that's what we want to stir up. 
Let's keep going. Verse 21. And she will have a son, and you are to name him Jesus, and he will save his people from their sins. All of this occurred to fulfill the Lord's message through his prophet. Look, the virgin will conceive a child, she will give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. God confirms the Old Testament word in Isaiah chapter 7, verse 14. Verse 24, when Joseph woke up, he did as the Lord commanded. He did as the Lord commanded and took Mary to be his wife, but he did not have sexual relations with her until her son was born. And Joseph named him Jesus. Now, I, I don't know how dramatic that was. I don't know exactly what happened in that moment. I mean, I see it as a very dramatic moment. I see it as a very significant moment. But I don't want that to overshadow that God still speaks to us and gives us confirmation of things. You know, Joseph was just confirming. He was just going to simply obey, obey. But why? Because Joseph knew the word of God. The, 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 I believe an angel in that dream, God speaking to him, was reminding him of the Old Testament. I believe that was already a part. So if we want to be, if we want to be lined up for a miracle and help with that, we need the word of God. It must be based on the word. And now look, those verses say that Joseph acted immediately. He obeyed. That's right. He obeyed immediately. He stepped out and, and, and he began to do what God asked him to do. God's looking for those who will simply obey. God's looking for those to, to, to work with that will understand what is God saying, wrestled with God. I know what he's asking me to do. I'm simply going to do it. I don't need to broadcast it. I don't need to let other people know how great I am. Joseph quietly and humbly did that. You know, Joseph was a man's man. That's right, he was. He was meek, power under control. He was humble, merciful, poor in spirit. He was righteous and hungered after righteousness. And I believe that he was courageous. Those are the attributes God's looking for. Those are the things that God wants to use in our lives. And they, those are obtainable for all of us, from all of us. I think it's interesting that those very characteristics, Joseph was a type of Jesus. So Joseph had godly characteristics that made him uh, available to God, if I can use that term, to see a miracle happen. But then Jesus, had, he was obviously God and had those characteristics and attributes but he had his natural father's attributes as well. Isn't that interesting? There's, there's almost like this, this flip going on here. God's attributes in the father and the father's attributes in the son. And the son represents God, which they're all tied together here. And as parents out there, for those of you that have children, that's what God wants of us. All those qualities that I just, just named there. That's what God's looking for. He's looking for those who will be sensitive in the spirit. He's looking for those who will be word-based, for those who will simply obey when he asks us to obey. That's what God's looking for. So I have a question for you. Are you ready for a miracle? Are you really, really ready? Are you postured in humility? Are you postured in such a way that the word of God is being, it's, you're being reminded of that? And again, I want to speak to those that, you, that have given up that you're ever going to see the miraculous and you're ever going to be a part of it, I want to get that vocabulary out, out, of your, uh, out, of your, out of your vocabulary, off your mind, never to be used again. Because I want you to really see yourself as being used of God to usher in Jesus to other people's lives. That's how we can posture ourselves for a miracle. And that's how I want you to posture yourself this Christmas season, to just say, I'm ready, God, for whatever you want to do in my life. I want to be ready again to be used, and, and I want prophecy to be used, and I want to be a person of prayer and devotion 
That's what I'm looking for. Do you, do you know what I've realized? The greatest players that we see, whether it's in football, baseball, basketball, pick your sport, it's not that they do one thing great. It's that they do a lot of little things. You see, sometimes it's, we're waiting for that big moment with God where our faith bursts into the scene and, and we just have all this faith. But you know what it's made up of? A lot of little things along the way. That's right. There's a lot of little things that God does with us and through us. And, 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 and I just want us to hone in. And what I'm asking you to do is just sharpen, go back to sharpening your sensitivity to the Spirit, saying, God, I, I need to be sensitive again. God, I, 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 need, I need this in my heart and my life here. If we want to birth a miracle, that's what it's going to take. And that's what I want you to see here. And so this week, posture yourself accordingly. But I want to take a moment and I want to speak to you out there that maybe don't have a personal relationship with God. I didn't ask you, do you believe in God? What I'm asking is, do you have a personal relationship with God? Have you, do you have a day, a moment, or time that you transferred the trust of your life off of what you can do for God and based your life on what God has already done for you? Sending Jesus, this baby in a manger, fully God, fully man, who lived a pure and sinless life and gave his life on the cross for you and for me. And then he was died, he buried, rose again, he ascended to heaven so that you and I could have a relationship with God the Father. And I want to offer you a relationship with God the Father. If we're ever going to be spirit-led and humble and be of the Word and understand what the Word says, and we're ever going to do simple obedience, then this is where it all starts. It starts with a relationship with God. So if you don't have a moment or a time, I want to offer that to you, where Jesus Christ becomes the forgiver of your past and the leader to your future. That's what Jesus wants to do. He wants to have a personal relationship with you. And if that's you right now, and you're saying, that's what I really long for. That's what I'm really, really wanting more than anything else. I want these words, pastor, that you say in the Bible to, to be real to me. And I, I want to know what the Spirit says. And if you want to respond, you could do so. And I want to know Jesus. Let us know. And I want to lead you in a prayer right now. And you can say this wherever you are are. Wherever you are, just say these words. Say, Father God. That's right, out loud. Father God, forgive me, for I'm a sinner, and I've missed the mark. But I ask you, Father, to forgive me because of what Jesus has done. And I ask you, Jesus, that's right, out loud. I ask you, Jesus, to lead me into my future. Amen. Let us know. Let us know so we can pray for you. Let us know so we can encourage you to take your next steps with God and we can stay in contact with you and encourage you accordingly. And for the rest of us, for all of us, let's posture ourselves for a miracle. Let's get ready for what God wants to do. Looking forward so much to this next week, to our candlelight worship experience that will be available online if you can't be with us in person. And next week, looking at two key characters Anna and Simeon, and how they affirmed Jesus as the Messiah. Can't wait for those times with you. Looking forward to that. Man, today was so much fun. So much fun. Yeah. I really enjoyed it. I really loved hearing the story of Joseph today. And I just wanted to remind everyone to not miss out on the Christmas Eve Eve online worship experience. December 23rd, 7 p.m. Yeah, definitely yeah. be there. Oh. Hold on, I gotta take this, it's Santa. <laughs> Bye, buddy. Hope you find your dad. And we hope that everyone has a very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year.
Buddy the Elf, what's your favorite color? 